Hi you guys, today I'm going to talk to you about isotopes and average atomic mass and percent abundance. So go ahead and take your notes out for unit 2, turn to page 4 where it says isotopes and atomic mass, get a highlighter, pencil, you'll need your periodic table as well as a calculator today. Okay, so have all those things out and let's get started. Um, let's start off by talking about what isotopes are. Okay. Okay, so isotopes, right here, are atoms of the same element, but they have different number of neutrons, okay? And uh, in the previous video, you learned that um, when you were talking about um, the element, the element, remember, is defined by the number of protons. So the number of protons actually identify which element you are looking at, okay? So let's talk about isotopes. Let's talk about iPhones for a second, and then we'll go back to isotopes. Okay. So we've got the um, iPhone. Okay. It's a type of a phone that we all know of, and we all like and admire. So two features of an iPhone that I can talk to you about is, and let's talk about model one of the isotope of the iPhone. So we have the iPhone an Apple product, and the very first model that came out, what was so wonderful about it is that it had actually had Apple Safari. The reason why the iPhone is such a big deal is because it gave internet in everyone's hands. That was a really big deal, okay? And another feature about the iPhone is, is that you actually had to put in a password, okay? You had to type in a password in order to access your iPhone. A passport, password that was unique, or a passcode or something, so you can even say passcode, okay? Okay, um, now we have, let's jump and say that we have iPhone 8. So we have model 8 of the iPhone, and this iPhone, just like the original, still has Apple Safari. That is a very unique feature of the iPhone. and. But they changed some things. Instead of putting a passcode, they actually had Touch ID on there. And then let's talk about iPhone 12. Again, what they have, something that is unique, is that it does. All iPhones have Apple Safari. That is a unique feature of it. But now it has something called Face ID. Okay? So if you look at this, This is what they have in common, okay? And this right here, this is what is different, okay? So we can say we have an iPhone that has three different models to it. The same thing can be said about an element. Let's say we have um, the element carbon. Okay? So we've got carbon right here. Okay? And we have model one of carbon that I'm going to say is carbon. 12. Okay? And what so, what do we know about all carbons? That all carbons have the same number of protons. So this happens to have six protons in it. Um, what you also understand is because its mass number is 12, then that means that its atomic number is also six. I have another type of carbon, or another model of carbon, and if I say that, then I have carbon 13. Okay, that's my model number. And again, that happens to be carbon has six protons in it, but now the number of neutrons is different. Now it's seven. And seven plus six, seven plus six equals 13. Now I have another model of carbon, and I call that carbon 14. 
okay? Again, the number of protons is the exact same because the number of protons identify the element. And then the number of neutrons, that's different now. That is 8. So 8 plus 6 will give me 14. That's how I get that. So if we look at this, this is what I have in common. Okay? And what is different in this is right here, the number of neutrons. This is what it is, what is different. Okay? See the comparison? This is, we're talking about an iPhone, we're talking about the element carbon. The iPhone has different models to it, so does carbon. Carbon has different models to it. We just happen to call it instead of model 1, 8, and 12, or iPhone 1, iPhone 8, and iPhone 12, we happen to say carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. Just like the iPhone, they have something that is in common. And so carbon also has something in common. What it has in common are the number of protons. So the number of protons. Okay, what is different, just like the iPhone, the way you keep security. Model 1 had just the passcode, Model 8 had Touch ID, and Model 12 has Face ID. If we're talking about carbon-12, it's got six neutrons in it. Carbon-13 has seven neutrons in it, and carbon-14 has eight neutrons in it. So the number of neutrons, that's what's different. Okay? the number of neutrons. Um, so, and so they're not going to be equal to one another. Right here, okay? That's what's different in these two guys. So, and that is why we say that all of these, instead of saying models, instead of using the models, the word model, we say the we is the word isotope. So this would be isotopes. This would be, um, this would be, and carbon-12 would be an isotope of carbon. Carbon-13 would be an isotope of carbon. And carbon-14 would be an isotope of carbon. Just like we can say model-1, um, the first iPhone is the first model of an iPhone. Then we have the eighth model of the iPhone. And then we have model-12 of the iPhone. So we could say isotope 12, isotope 13, isotope 14. So that's what an isotope is, okay? So let's go back to your notes, and now that you understand isotopes a little bit better, let's do this one example that we have here, okay? Going closer, okay. So right here we've got lithium and uh, lithium-8 isotope. So if I have lithium-7, and lithium-8. Lithium-7, right here, has same number. All lithium, so you're using your periodic table in this case, all lithium would have three protons in it, or the atomic mass. So it would have three protons in it, which would be three. And then the number of neutrons, in this case, would be four. Okay, lithium-8, on the other hand, would be the number of protons, would be 3 again, and the number of neutrons would be, in this case, um, the number of neutrons would be 5. So what is different? Protons and protons are the same, but it is the number of neutrons that makes it different. Okay, so that's what an isotope is. And that's why we have, we say that there are different number of neutrons. Okay, so the example in here says how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in bromine 80, arsenic 75, and strontium 88. Okay, and since we are talking about electrons, I just want to mention that these are all neutral atoms. In a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So if we go to back, and we go to bromine 80, that would be the number of protons 
according to my periodic table, well, my is right here, which would be 35. Arsenic is right here, that would be 33. And then the last one that we are looking at is strontium. Strontium is right here, that's 38. Okay, you really just have to get very comfortable at using the periodic table and knowing where elements are. You don't have to memorize it, but um, you just have to start getting familiar with it. So bromine, the number of the atomic number is 35. That means it has 35 protons in it. 35 mi 80 minus 35 would give me 45 neutrons and electrons. Well, I'm letting you know that it's a neutral atom. So the number of protons, which is 35, is how many electrons you have? 35. Arsenic. Same way. Number of protons. In this case, remember, for arsenic, the number of protons was 33. So if we, 75 minus 33 would give me 42. And the number of electrons, since it is a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, which is 33. And then we have strontium, 88. And we have protons, which is, in this case, strontium has 38 um, protons, or the atomic number is 38. And then the neutron is 50. And then the number of electrons, because it is neutral, it would be the exact same, 38. So in order to get the neutrons, remember, you need to subtract mass number, which is 88, minus the number of protons, 38, to give you the um, number of neutrons, 50. Okay? So that's what an isotope is. Now let's talk about uh, um, percent abundance and average atomic mass. Okay? So going back to my carbon example right here, I can say that that... You know, when we're out in the field and we dig up carbon, we dig up carbon and we don't know which isotope of carbon we have. Remember, the isotopes are naturally occurring. They're, they occur with all different types of carbon. Um, same way, if you go into the iPhone, if you go into the Apple Vault, you won't find just Model 12 in there but you'll find all the Apple phones there together, safely tucked away um, in their vault. And so they've, they've, got, uh, um, they've got this saved in their vault, same way with carbon. When we go out and find carbon, you're not finding just one type of carbon, which is carbon-12, and then there's another area where there's carbon-13. You're finding just the element carbon. And when upon close investigation, that's when you realize Oh, well, this is the percentage of carbon-12 we have. Um, that percentage could be something like um, 60%, okay? And then you can say, oh, carbon-13. Well, the percentage of carbon-13 that we have is, oh, 15% of the whole entire carbon, the lump sum of carbon. And then you can say, oh, well, the percentage of carbon-14 that I have is... Um, 25%. Okay? So together, this should equal the total amount of carbon that we have found, which would be close to 100, or it is 100. So we can say the majority of the carbon that we found in that lump sum of carbon, a pile of carbon that I brought back to my lab, was 60% was carbon-12. And then a smaller portion, 15%, was carbon-13, and then 14% was carbon-25. Keep in mind, you guys, that I'm making up these numbers. These numbers vary greatly in real life, and so I'm just making, saying, giving you these numbers to keep the math the same, to keep the math easy. So, um, but this is my percentage of carbon that I have. So when we're looking at your periodic table, and if you look at carbon, the the number right here, this is not the mass number of carbon. This number, on the other hand, is actually the average atomic mass of carbon. This number includes all the different isotopes of carbon and the percentage that, of each isotope that is present. Okay, 
And there is a calculation that we do, so let's talk about that. So in order to calculate the atomic mass, which is the same thing as the average atomic mass, so highlight that. So the weighted average mass of each element's isotope, which is right here. So the atomic mass is the same thing as the average atomic mass of each element's isotope. And we do this by noticing the percent of the isotope that's present. So if you look at this equation right here, this is isotope 1, whatever isotope we're talking about. This is isotope 2, whatever isotope I'm talking about. And keep in mind that you're adding these guys up. And then I have isotope 3. I don't have to. I can. And I can have as many as I want. It doesn't make a difference. So I've got the first one is my ratio. It's actually the percentage of the isotope that I have. So usually this is a ratio because it's a ratio because you're usually, it's a percentage and you're dividing by 100. And this is just times the mass. So this right here is the ratio times the mass of the isotope that was found. And then the second isotope is again the percentage or the ratio of it times the mass of it. And if you had third one, you would do the exact same. It would be percentage or the ratio of that isotope times the mass of that isotope or the weight of that isotope, okay? So let's do problem one. What is the average atomic mass of magnesium? So if we go back to our periodic table, the average atomic mass, it is this number, 24.3. This is the average atomic mass that I'm looking at, okay? That I'm trying to find, okay? So, the average atomic mass of magnesium is, and we get a first percentage. So this is the first isotope that I have. This is my isotope 1. How do I know? Well, it's the first one that's mentioned, so I say it's isotope 1. But I have my percentage right here, and then I'm given my mass, which is right here. Mass is always an, is always an AMU, and the percentage is usually an percent sign. The second one right here this is my second isotope okay so i'm going to write here on the side isotope two so that is i have 10 percent which is my ratio right here and then i have my mass 24.986 amu so that is my mass and then i've got my third isotope now, my equation only gave me 1 and 2, but keep in mind, I can have 3, I can have 4, I can even have 30 isotopes. It doesn't make a difference because you can add up as many isotopes you want. Each time, remember what you were doing. You were simply adding up each of the different types of isotopes. Okay, so I've got my ratio and I've got my mass that's right here. Okay, so let's uh, um, go ahead and solve this. I don't know what the mass, average atomic mass of my isotope is. That's what I'm going to find, so I'm just going to leave it like that, okay? And I'm going to do this two ways. Whichever way you feel more comfortable with, do that, okay? So the first one, I'm just going to follow the equation. I have my percentage of the first isotope, which is 78.99 divided by 100 times 23.98. Five. And I don't need to write AMU. That's my first one, first isotope. My second isotope is 10.00%, um, so I don't need to write the percentage, divided by 100 times 24.986. My third isotope that I have is 1.01 divided by 100 times 25.983. And keep in mind that this 100, you can either individually do the ratio, multiply the percent by 100, or you, could li you can multiply 78.99 times 23.985, and then divide the whole thing by 100. 
it doesn't make a difference difference the function is the exact same okay so if I take my calculator okay and I'm going to start adding all this up in my calculator since this is my calculator and I'm doing each of the ratios I can just simply put parentheses and um, I can solve for it um, but before I do that let me talk about something else another way that you can do this is that if it is a little bit complicated for you um, the 78.99 divided by 100 then simply take this and convert it into um, the decimal form of it so if we do this on the other hand um, 78.99 if we get rid of the percentage then it comes out to be 0 0.7899 and then we can just simply multiply by 23.985 plus again with the 10 get rid of the decimal that means divide by 100 um, as it is and when you do it is 0 0.1000 um, 0, 0 times 24.986 so notice that this function right here for the ratios I am actually doing it right here and including it um, because literally when you're dividing by 100 you're just moving the decimal two places each time because you're dividing by and so that's sometimes a lot easier to do so if you like to do that then by all means do it that way and that is just fine um, probably less chances of error okay so now that I've put this in I'm going to actually put it in my calculator so and I'm going to put this bottom one in and since I'm doing individual functions, I'm going to use uh, uh, my parentheses, okay, to put it, to input it into my calculator. So I'm going to open up my parentheses, 0 0.7899 times 23.895, okay. Close parentheses, plus, and now I'm going to do my second ratio, open parentheses, 0 0.1000, times 24.986 close parentheses and then plus now I'm going to do my third ratio and that is open parentheses 0 0.1101 times 25.983 okay and I'm going to close my parentheses and there I have it the mass so the mass of my magnesium that I have don't forget to write magnesium on the side right here okay this is also magnesium so the mass of my magnesium that I have for both of these either way the cat the number should be the exact same and the number is going to be 24.305 remember we're dealing with four six figs one two three four this is five four five four five so my answer is going to have four six figs this is going to be rounded up, so it's 24.31 AMU. AMU is the unit for my average atomic mass, okay? So this is my average atomic mass for magnesium. And we should always check, since we already know about this stuff, if we go back to our periodic table, the average atomic mass of magnesium, it's about 34.30, which is very similar to what we have right here so do yourself a favor every single time and um, go to your periodic table and always check so the average atomic mass of magnesium okay in your PT which is your periodic table okay so you check on your periodic table P T. Okay. And it should be. Okay, so this is your I'm gonna scratch that out. This is your average atomic mass, which is what you got. It should be it should be equal to what's on your periodic table for magnesium, which is also 31.31. Okay. So this is just you trying to find the average atomic mass, what this weight is. What if I gave you a problem where I gave you the weight and I gave you the masses, but what I'm asking you for is the percentage? Okay, so that's a little different. And when we are asking for percentage, we are actually saying we want to find out the percent abundance. 
Okay, that is the percentage of the isotope that we are looking for. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So if we um, move on right here, do it this way. So you know how you have a sample of, you have a bag, and you have in there 100 um, samples of a mixture of red and yellow m &Ms. okay? You have 100, total of 100, and you want to find out what percentage of red do you have and what percentage of, y you have, of yellow you have. So your inkling would be to say that red plus yellow would give me 100, right? So that's how you would find out. However many red plus the number of yellow would give me 100. Well, here you're dealing with two variables. I don't like dealing with two variables, so let's make it one variable only. And if we do, let's go ahead and change this. Okay, and instead of using R, I'm going to use X plus Y is equal to 100 to make it easier for you to understand. So I'm going to change this Y and try to make it like X. So how do I do that with percentages? Well, if I have X and I want to find out how many Ys I have or how many yellow m and I have, my new equation would be 100 minus so would you say x plus 100 minus x equals to 100? Would you say that these, this equation is the same as this equation? Yeah, I would. It is the same equation because I'm simply saying that if I have, let's say I have 25 and 75 percent the verminance, if I have 25 plus 75 gives me 100. The same way, this is 25, and how do I find out how many yellow M&Ms I have? Well, I told you, you have 100, so 100 minus 25, this would be 75. So we still have 25, 75 will give us 100, either way. Because this is right here, this is 100 minus 25, which gives us 75. So keep this equation in mind right here, and I'll rewrite it for you. x plus 100 minus x equals 100. Now the 100s are a really big number, so let's make it easy on ourselves, and let's get rid of these one zeros. So we can say that this is the same kind of equation. You just got rid of the zeros right here and just have the ones instead. Okay, so keep this in mind right here. Okay, I'm going to talk about percent abundance. I'm going to put this here. Okay, so you can see that. All right, so my previous equation that I had is right here, I have my percentage times my mass. But now over here, I'm missing my percentage. And what I'm given, okay, so going back to this, um, finding the percent abundance. So what you were trying to do is you were trying to find the percentage of, the, of each of the isotopes that's given to you. So we're gonna go back to this equation. And in this one, in this problem, it says the atomic mass of gallium is 69.72 AMU. So they actually give us the average atomic mass, which is something that they didn't give us before. In the previous problem, we were trying to find the average atomic mass, but now they give it to us, and they say it's 69.72 AMU. So we don't know what percentage that is. So out of 100, we're going to say that it is percentage X this time. So it is X. And we do know the mass of it, so we have percentage x, but remember, when you have your percentage right here, you multiply with your mass, so in this case, your mass is 
69.68.9257. So that's for the first isotope that we have. Okay. Now for the second isotope, we have a second isotope, and then and they give us the mass of the second isotope. Again, I'm going to add it. I don't know what my percentage is, so instead of saying um, putting another variable. I'm going to use this variable, 1 minus x, because I want all the variables to be the same. So I'm going to put 1 minus x, I'm going to put parentheses around this, okay, times my mass. And in this problem, times your mass right here. So in this case, it is 70.9249 AMU. And then it's just equals. Um, which is what it is equal to the average atomic, so I'm not going to put the other equal sign there. Now what you're going to do is you are going to solve this. So in case you are confused by this, there's no decimal here. It's just my, I put a dot there. So you have x times this, 68, so it's going to be 68.9257x plus, and I'm now going to distribute all of this with this number, so it's going to be 70.9249 and then 70.9249x. Again, this dot right here is just part of my pen. So let me try to take it out. There we go. Okay. Okay. So notice I have two like variables. I have an x, a number and an x, and a number of, and an x. So I'm going to combine those two. And when I combine these two variables, I get negative 1.9992x. And I get 70.9249. Okay? And I'm going to bring this down. The 69.72. Now I can subtract. Since this is an x, I can't really subtract it, but I can subtract minus 70.9249. Basically, this is an algebraic equation that you have. And this algebraic equation, you are now trying to solve for x. So you want to try to combine the x's together. And you want to get any, vari any numbers that do not have a variable onto what the other side. So if I subtract it, 70.9249, this will be x, and it's going to be now minus 1.2049. And then I have this number that is still there, so minus 1.992x. So if we continue solving for x, then x happens to equal 0. 6027, and that is solving for this x. If we plug in our x value for the second percentage that we were looking for, then it is 1 minus 0 0.6027, and that would give us 0.3973. So these are the two values that we are looking at right here. They're decimal places. Remember that we took our number out of a total of 100 um, in our original equation that we had. We had 100, we made it into 1. So we're going to need to go back and multiply this by 100, each one of these. And when we do, we get our percentage. So this would be 60.27% for x. Remember, x is equal to 69. So gallium, this is about 69. And this is gallium about 71, okay? So gallium 69 would be 60.27%. And gallium 71, multiply this by 100, that's 39.3%. So 39.73%. And if you um, just add everything up, it should, you guys, equal to 100, which you know is about right. So this is about 100. Check it with your periodic table. Um, and, uh, well, you can't check it because these are percentages that we're talking about.
but it should equal to 100, and then that's how you would check it, okay? All right, then this concludes my lecture on um, percent abundance, average atomic mass of isotopes, and hope I have answered your questions. Bye.